What's up, hotties? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Blade and Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, Matthew Spawnauer and Theo Ash. And we're back to finish up recapping week two of the NFL season before getting into a little bit of our week three preview, some storylines we're excited for, and of course, the Stay Hot Locks. Um, none of us won the locks this week. Um, some people came close. But no one could really finish it. But before we get into today's content, Matt, Theo, how are you doing on this beautiful Wednesday evening? I'm like Matt. I got nothing going on. Wow. I do usually say that, but, you know, I see you smirking when you're like, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of doing a Matthew. That shit's going on in my life. Yeah. I don't know. I just keep my head down sometimes. That's cool, though. It's yeah, cool. You wouldn't get it. He's just a hustler in the right. trenches. Or maybe I have moves I don't want to speak on. Oh. <laughs> moves? What, what's going on in Kentucky, dude? What moves are there? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Kentucky, by the way. You're in Kentucky, you're in K- buddy. So what? what when I was there? in Ohio, people were like, oh, you're in Ohio. There's no <laughs> winning. Yeah, well, yeah, there is winning. You can move to, like... Minnesota or yep. like Washington. Oh, or dude, California. I've got to move to Minnesota, <laughs> of like course. Come Arizona on. Arizona or Colorado <laughs> or Maine or like one of the Carolinas, move up back home. Like going from Ohio to Kentucky, that's, yeah, like I gotta, saying, that's like saying I was on the Panthers, now I'm on the Giants, and people still talk bad about me. I can't win. It's like you got to go I mean, to a that's good. That's Brian Burns, right? You got to go to a good team. <laughs> Right, Burns right. is a good player. Yeah, you you are the Brian Burns of the moving world. <laughs> it's a nice place. It's walkable. It's affordable. But you're right. Everybody needs to live in New York. If if you <laughs> are listening to this and you don't live in New York, you you need to have FOMO about not living in New York right now. At, at least up, upstate. <laughs> yeah. Maybe when I become super rich and move to San Diego and I make fun of everyone that doesn't live in San Diego. At the minimum, you need to be living in, in Chicago. <laughs> Minimum, minimum, yeah, Chicago. Or maybe like a suburb of Chicago, minimum. Naperville. <laughs> yeah. But I won't... Chicago I won't, get that I, reference. I'm not telling you how I'm doing, and I won't speak on what I've got. I was actually on Nerd Sesh recently, Ooh, as, as, as recently as like two hours ago, oh. and I was on State of the League two days ago. So it's been a big wow. podcasting week for me. That's really been my focus. What do you even talk about on State of the League these days? We talked about the Hornets and the Panthers, and then I went on the I went on Nerd Session. We talked about the Panthers again. So I'm I'm like I, I, here's the thing. I made like five TikToks. I'm good. <laughs> I'm about done now. About, you don't want to talk about Bryce Young getting benched? We probably should. Yeah. Do we do we actually actually oh, do we want to talk about? No, uh, we the, didn't. This is like the one place we really like. This is my last. Yeah, stop. this is your last stop. But, but here's the thing. Stop. Here's the good news. We actually already covered this in the last episode when I talked about the Panthers because what did I say? I said it's about it's about time. Like it's coming sooner rather than later. Now, to be fair, yeah. I said I think it'll be like two to three more weeks. But I, I, the writing was already like the on the day. wall. Yeah, the writing was already on the wall. I mean, like I said, they just couldn't run a real offense. They easily, obviously, would go 0-17 if they just left him in there with how he's playing right now. Mm-hmm. I think Dalton will be a significant upgrade, and I think everybody else deserves to have a replacement-level quarterback around them. Do you think that you you can fleece a, a fifth-rounder for him, or do you think they'll keep him around? Uh, I think the evil Panthers organization ruined poor Bryce Young, and, and your team can fix him. And honestly, he's worth a first still. So, yeah, <laughs> anybody listening, call your him. call your local GM or whatever. But, yeah, I, I think they could. Well, I just what don't know. What are guys' thoughts on that trade proposal where – the Rams get Bryce Young, <laughs> and the the Dolphins get Matthew Stafford, and the Panthers get what a second and a third round pick. Everybody, everybody trying to get bangers off the Panthers being ass, but like it's leading us to Bryce Young is worth a second and a third right now, and like Bryce <laughs> Young isn't a bust, and that I, I really can't agree you know, with. I, what did the Rams? It, it brings get up for- an interesting. It brings up an interesting point though, like getting off bangers for clicks. Like, why aren't we doing that? You know. I think we should propose an even more absurd Bryce Young trade. Mm. Um, and, and those that are listening, 
can just go on with a joke on Twitter. It's like, oh my god, you guys are crazy. Sure, we'll cook um, something up. He ne- he needs to be a. I don't know what would really be shocking. Maybe trading him for a coach. I like that <laughs> for a banger for potential. A oh my god, dude! Like Bryce, Bryce Young for <laughs> like Ben Johnson somehow like a three team <laughs> trade. <laughs> Passing offense has been bad with the Lions. They need someone with a little bit more creation ability. (laughs) Bryce Young and the Panthers' first round pick for Ben Johnson. Hmm. That could be it. Yeah, the Lions, they're 25th in passing EPA. Stock is down. Yeah, you got to trade them. You got to trade them, Lions. You got to get it. (laughs) But no, let's let's talk about the, the games that occurred that we haven't talked about yet. It's what we uh, take a little bit of Wednesday to to recap some of the Monday night game and then some of the games we didn't talk about on our Sunday record. What is up, hotties? You know that when it comes to NFL football, Stay Hot has you covered. But who do you turn to when you need to make smart financial decisions? If your answer is our sponsor, NerdWallet, then you're absolutely right. And if it's not, then allow me to change your mind. Because not only have they spent thousands of hours researching and reviewing over 1,300 financial products, but they have the tools you need to make smarter financial financial decisions. Looking for a credit card? Go beyond the basic comparisons. Filter for features that matter to you and read in-depth reviews. Ready to choose a high-yield savings account? Get access to exclusive deals and compare rates, bonuses, and more. House hunting? View today's top mortgage rates for your new home sweet home. So while Stay Hot is your go-to resource for NFL football, make the nerds your go-to resource for smart financial decisions. Head to nerdwallet.com forward slash learn more. NerdWallet. Finance Smarter. Disclaimer, NerdWallet Compare, Inc., NMLS 1617539. You know, there's just something magical about being at a live event, whether it's the energy of a packed stadium, the thrill of a concert, or the laughter at a comedy show. There's truly nothing like it. I remember catching a game last year, one of those last-minute decisions where everything just fell into place. The roar of the crowd, the buzz in the air. It's an experience you just can't replicate anywhere else, and I'm really looking forward to making even more memories this year. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about Game Time, the app that's been a game changer for me. They've had this new feature called Game Time Picks, and trust me, it's a lifesaver. It takes all the hassle out of finding tickets by showing you the best deals on the best seats. So no more endless scrolling or second guessing. Just the other day, I was looking for tickets to an upcoming concert, one I've been dying to see, and I decided to check out Game Time Picks. And let me tell you, the deals they had were unreal. I found a super deal that was just too good to pass up. And within minutes, I had my seats locked in. The app even let me preview the view from my seats before I bought them, so I knew exactly what to expect. But what really impressed me was with how easy the whole process was. The app is super intuitive, and with features like all-in pricing, there were no surprise fees at checkout. What you see is what you get, plus with their lowest price guarantee. I knew I was getting the best possible deal. And if anything happened, like the event got canceled, they got you covered with their flexible customer service policy. So if you're anything like me and you'll want to take the guesswork out of buying tickets, you've got to check out Game Time. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code BLADINGK for $20 off your first purchase. That's, of course, B L A I D E N K for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, low lowest price guaranteed but we'll start with monday in what was a shocking loss by the philadelphia eagles um i said in tiktok this was like the worst 90 seconds of pro football i've ever seen (laughs) like quite quite literally to go from they were up three with under two minutes with the ball falcons have no timeouts and there's just kind of a series of failures that happen. I won't necessarily say bad decisions, though people have been critical of the decision to pass it on third down. Bad decisions. But there, that is a questionable decision, but the play was open. Like, it was an open bad look. De- Jalen Hurts bad hit decision. Saquon has to catch that. So, I mean, you're going to be, okay, we're going to be aggressive and throw the ball. Now, keep in mind, yeah, Saquon dropped yeah. it, but that's the thing about throwing the ball, is that that can mm-hmm. happen and the clock can stop. It's a risk. Right. 
you're going to be aggressive and do that and then kick the field goal on fourth and three. That Bang. does not make sense. That's that's really the bad decision in my mind. If you're going to throw it on third and short, dude, just go for it. Like what? And and to not run it knowing that if you get two yards, you feel like it is a literal guarantee that you pick up the fourth and one or like even a fourth and two and that you can get it down to like a minute flat with the Falcons having no timeouts and worst case scenario, they would have the ball down three at like their own three with no timeouts. Here's the way that I thought about it. Third and three, Eagles have the ball, minute 40 to go. If you were the Falcons, what would you be hoping that they do? You'd hope that they would throw it and then kick the field goal, and that's exactly what they did. Now, the defense sold as well, and then Hurst came down and threw a bad pick. There was more to it than that, and Saquon could have caught it. It was a lot to come together to get them to lose that game. But part of that was the decision-making, and the reason why people are so critical about Sirianni because of those decisions is because the the whole debate is like what does he actually do what is Sirianni affecting well the decision making on how you handle the end of a game is one of the few things where it's like okay this is what he is doing and he blundered it badly it's on the rest of the team as well Saquon needed to catch it but when I go look at Saquon I can say oh well this is what Saquon did for the rest of the game he had one bad play but he was pretty great yes the defense, I can go point out and say, for the most part, they held up outside of this really bad drive. And Jalen Hurts, yeah, he's he's had some bad turnovers, but I can go point to this and this and this, and like we can tush push because of him and, played a and all this, great game all this different stuff. But with Sirianni, there's nothing else to point to, and except for this, and he he just he just made the wrong call. You run it there, and then you either, and then honestly, you probably go for it on just fourth run it again. running again. Yeah, I would have ran zone read twice. <laughs> if, if I had to. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're telling me between Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley, two run plays, they can't get four yards? I don't believe that. No, I, I completely agree. You guys said all that needs to be said about that. What do you do, Sirianni? You, you got to manage this situation exactly well, and you didn't. What do you do? So, no doubt, that was the most frustrating thing that happened. But also... I thought the Eagles' defense looked like it had some pretty major flaws throughout the course of the night. I mean, we saw the Falcons run into the Steelers week one, and they weren't able to do anything on the ground. They meet Mm -hmm. the Eagles, and all of a sudden, they're running all over the place. And and last week, the Packers ran all over the Eagles in the second half as well. I know they bottled Jacobs up pretty good in the first first part of it, but they still allowed the Jaden Reed touchdown on the end around, and overall— it became a bit of a shootout. They're lucky that the Packers weren't able to keep it on the ground more. They're just light in the in the box, it feels like. Nolan Smith, Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat at this point, I felt like they were really getting caved in yeah. on those wide zones and weren't getting a lot of pressure on two tackles that they should have been able to get after if they really have a front that's like that. Then you think about the linebackers, Bond, and you think about uh nicobe dean a bit smaller like they're torpedoes but they're not someone who can really like to get be responsible for two gap and really play heavy on these linemen and then jalen carter was getting reached all day like chris lindstrom got in front of him sealed him off every time like jordan davis isn't on the field a whole lot like it's just a light and um then the rookie corner issue kind of reared its ugly head in the game winning uh drive situation although i do think quinion has been an overall positive in the uh yeah, in in the season so far, but still, uh, they high load him twice, and he went real like it's the game winning situation. Why are you diving into the flat and allowing wide open corner routes behind you? It happened. Uh, it happened, and then they ran an out route on him and cooked him again, mm-hmm. and then he missed the tackle. So the defense is still an issue. Like they 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 changed Vic Fangio, but they're not finishing plays they're not tackling super great they're light in the box still like i thought i agree with you bladen jalen hurts played a pretty good game like he outside of that pick at the end he was really effective on the ground like his touchdown to smith was pretty slick like yep. i thought he was an overall positive for them um that interception was really bad though <laughs> yeah the interception wasn't great though at the end and then the defense like they, i still they definitely is. know like what are what are you gonna do in like a need to score situation, go up the sideline to your best deep th- deep ball threat. Like that's what the Eagles he wasn't do. Open. Yeah, yeah he it's like wasn't open. he he forced that throw so bad. 
yeah, Bates on top of it. Terrell was in yeah, really good coverage. Like, like it just wasn't there, and he threw it. And like, what are they going to do against the Saints next week? This defense, I fear. I fear. I very much fear. Yeah. I don't disagree at all. I don't disagree at all. It's just a bad way to blow a game. That being mm-hmm. said, I, I will say that Kirk Cousins looked a little bit more mobile in this one. He did. Uh, he was moving around. Like I'm not saying like crazy great or anything, but 2023 20, levels, right? Right, right. He he looked he looked a lot more like himself. I mean, when we saw you know week one that he legitimately couldn't take a step left or right, that was bizarre. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like they worked on it, and, and he was looking a lot better. So. And the- and they ran play action. That was my biggest concern was like, he literally can't turn and run or like run and boot. Like that's how messed up his foot is. That was my big concern uh, on the Manning cast. Peyton mentioned that Kirk told him that it was a Steelers game plan thing more than a, he can move thing, which is a silly game plan to not play action even once. But tonight I think he showed that like, okay, it can still be in the offense at least a little bit. And that's kind of all you need against a, a defense like this one Bijan is running so well just a little bit of that I mean it wasn't gr- he still missed some throws like he had some moments where he looked a bit washed no doubt but to add that play action element back and for him to look very comfortable in the two minute drill as he has in Minnesota for years like it comes down to the last two minutes and he just unlocks some other part of himself that wasn't there the entire game and he just moves right down the field I've seen it a gazillion times that looked like it was back before the first half they went on a two minute drive and scored and of course to end the game they scored so the two minute stuff being back was cool yeah Kirk Cousins is also I feel like not pressured as much as he was in Mm-hmm. week one and maybe that's just another point to the equals being light mm-hmm. their so. edge rushers are like have zero sacks in two games so far they, can we trade bryce uh, can we just undo the bryce young hassan reddick uh, Br- bryce huff hassan reddick trade like let's just, just switch that around and call it good yeah reddick doesn't <laughs> doesn't want to be there anyway <laughs> uh yeah so I think that's all that needs. I don't know. I don't have a whole lot else. Drake London played a great game. Darno Moody played a really good game too. That was oh, and then uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. <laughs> what about him? The tackle? <laughs> he just he just got cooked, man. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. On the blitz, he jumped the route. I, he saved the game for them at the end, and then. Almost he got cooked a couple of times, rest. and I, someone said this on Twitter, and I, I thought it was pretty spot on. That generally, he's a good player, but he has a really awful low light reel. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, he's the best run defender that they have. <laughs> so, I just like the the Browns a few years ago with Grant Delpit before JOK really took off. Grant Delpit had a nice game. I don't know. Was the Browns versus Jaguars on our list? Uh, we we talked about them a little bit. The Browns defense balled out. Mm. Yeah, that, that 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 has to be said. Delpit the offense, had a nice it's, game. It's, they, they put up eighteen. It's whatever. But but yeah, I was impressed. I was happy with the way the defense played. That made me that made me feel good. Um, but some of the other games we wanted to get to another AFC North team actually the Steelers and. The Broncos. How are we feeling about Bo Picks? <laughs> Not that good, man. I mean, I, I was just thinking about. You know, I don't. I don't want to say anything too crazy about Bo Nix just yet. Out of respect, you know, it's only been two games or whatever. Sure. But it, it really does seem like moving through reads is not his strong suit and for like a game manager type guy sometimes maybe that's like maybe that's probably gonna be a pretty big problem you know he's he's very old and was 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 drafted to come in here and and be sort of a not necessarily a crazy creator super high upside superstar guy but more of like a manager I mean that's that's what I think Peyton was looking for and for him to to make a lot of bad mistakes and have four interceptions quickly you know he's still a rookie but you would have liked to see him be more pro ready and there's definitely some questions about like you know going from Auburn to then Oregon when a lot of the reads were super easy how much of that 
uh, was part of his success. And, uh, you know, he was quarterback six taken at pick 12. And we've seen, you know, the Raiders who did who needed a quarterback but didn't reach for one instantly feel like that's a great choice for them with Brock Bowers being, I mean, one, one of the best tight ends in the NFL, probably. I know it's too early to say oh, yeah. that. He's, but he's top 10. He is. He's top yeah, 10. Like he's, yeah. and, and we'll see where we are two years probably from higher. now, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, guys like Byron Murphy and, and Fuaga who have made huge impacts early. I just think this Broncos roster is, is, is not close enough to be competitive in terms of just uh, how many draft picks they've hit recently standpoint. And I, I think they worried too much about, you know, how do we feel like we can be perfectly competitive and fill all of our holes in 2024 instead of how can we get enough talent so where when we try to go like really round things out it's worth rounding out you know mm-hmm. uh, at this this Broncos team just isn't anywhere close where it needs to be and it's you know you can always at any given point um you know just start making connections with the with the next picks that you get but to me this just feels like an offense that lacks lacks the talent to, to be anything special yeah, Bo Nix, he can't read the field, and it's a problem. He's throwing it into triple coverage. He's making, like, rare bad reads. Like, picks usually have a pretty thin margin of error. Think about all the times where it's, like, it's a bender up the middle, and, like, they try to squeeze it in the window, and it sails on him, and a, and a pick happens like that, and the safety mm-hmm. gets it or something like that. It's, it's not always that the quarterback just doesn't know what he's looking at and throws it into triple coverage. Like, that is a mistake that's pretty much reserved for uh, rookies and, I guess, Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I just think that all the picks have been, like, so bad, and he just doesn't know what he is looking at. And at Oregon, he wasn't really asked to look down the field and read things yes. out very much. And Sean Payton looked at the analytics and said, well, even if you take out all the screens, he still has a good, like, yards per attempt. And it's like, okay, well, it's not that the analytics also should say that drafting an old quarterback is, like, a terrible thing to do, and they still did right. it. So it's like you can't just look at, like, the box score and make your decision off of that. I don't know. It just, yeah, you can't read it down the field. He wasn't asked to do it, and now he, he can't, and the game looks too fast for him, mm-hmm. and... It's I mean, we, we've said it a million times. I'm sure Broncos fans are sick of us saying it, but like absolutely nothing the Broncos did in their quarterback search. Like all of these little like nuggets of news that we get from them or like quotes sound ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That one, the McCarthy one, the the football and the bag story. It's like, dude, none of that crap matters at all. Like, none of that is even it, remotely relevant. It feels relevant. like a con. It fe- and it happens a lot of the times in football because all the coaches are, like, selling a vision. And sometimes the vision is just, like, bullshit. Like, it's happening in another team in Colorado right now. I watch the local news around Denver. And it's so <laughs> funny because it's, like, the, everybody's so positive And, like, they're, the head coach coaches of these teams like justify everything that they do so like strongly and then the games happen and it's like nothing is going right for you you suck and it's it's not a real like you're saying Matt everything that happened in this offseason for Sean Payton it felt like a fairy tale like oh he doesn't have any we were looking for chewing tobacco in his backpack but it was just a bible and a football like hell yeah and it's like people actually got sold on that yeah it's like it's like that versus Brock Bowers tape at Georgia. It's just crazy <laughs> stuff, man. It doesn't make any sense to me. Again, you know, it's the first couple of games. Can things be better? Of course. But it's it's you know, when when you're showing the exact same problems that that there were concerns about you having early and you're supposed to be pro ready and you're older and I mean, you were quarterback 6 for a reason. It's just a lot of negatives. Uh and, and, and you're starting 0-2, and, and, and I don't love the talent on the roster. There's there's just not a, a ton to be super, super pumped about there. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, is starting 2-0, and uh, and Justin Fields has looked, like, interestingly serviceable. I think what what works for them so well is that Fields, Fields has done a good job so far of not taking big negative plays. I don't think he's thrown an interception yet. 
if I I'm... I can't remember it happening, so I, I don't think I so. might be. And I think he's only taken like a, I think he's taken a few sacks, but only a handful of sack yards. I don't think the Steelers' offense is good, but I do think that for a team that is is led by Arthur Smith and like wants to keep chugging along and and try to string together these long drives, Fields fits well because. He does a good job of avoid like if there's pressure, if things are breaking down, like he can just get out and run at any time, and he's been really willing to do that, and that helps them stay on pace. There's a lot of stuff that they haven't really tried, like been trying to hit with Fields there, uh, but when I compare like what uh, what he's been able to do in this offense compared to like a Ritter or a Heineke. I'm definitely thinking that, like, yeah, I'd, I'd lean Fields here. His rushing ability has been super, super valuable to them. Yeah, they're chugging along. I mean, they're two and zero, and they've scored one offensive touchdown. It's, it's come, right. you, they're avoiding mistakes, like you're saying, Matt. That's the important thing. Eventually, they'll need to get a little bit more charged than that. But it is going about. I mean, this is the way you knew that they were going to have to win games, and they have so. Yeah, it's uh, going about as well as you could hope, I'd say. Najee Harris is running pretty well, I'd say. Like, he's looking physical. It doesn't seem like he's as inefficient as he was when he was super young. So, yeah, I I think that there's reason to be encouraged if you're the Steelers. Minka Fitzpatrick being back is huge. He's been a big positive for them so far. Yeah, it's 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 looking good. They're they're running some gap scheme. Uh, they're not just the pure zone team that they were or Arthur Smith was last year, which is was one of the keys for them. I thought. So yeah, it's 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 going fine. Yeah, twenty two rushing attempts so far for Justin Fields. I think that's a pretty high mark. I mean, that yeah. would be that would be getting you around two hundred <laughs> rushing attempts over the course of a year for a QB. But you know, that's probably what he should be doing. And again, if if it's if being kind of a bail quick soon guy stops you from taking sacks and making bad plays and then at least helps your like time of possession. I think that's the type of team that the Steelers are. I don't know what the ceiling on this is. I think if they hit a stretch of like really competitive teams, like they're obviously prone to an ugly loss. But um, they're two and zero. Shout out they're to t- them. They're two and zero. That's the, the thing. When they play a good off, like a really good offense, that'll be kind of their big test of the year. I don't know. I, I don't again. I don't know their schedule off rip, but that to me is going to be the the mark of like, okay, how is this team really? Because they played. The Falcons week one, which I, I, t- I guess at this point serves well as the Kirk Cousins, like, feel it out game. Um, and then they played Denver, who has almost definitely the worst rookie quarterback in this class. Yeah. And so next week they've got the Chargers, who they, they've been running the ball really well, and they've got Herbert. Then they play the Colts, which we'll we'll get to the Colts here in a bit. And then they play Dallas. They've got they've got a stretch of like teams that could beat them up offensively, but yeah, it'll yeah. be interesting to see how just how good this defense is because it looks right. pretty great so it, far. It, but you're right, it's that carrying them right now. Mm-hmm. And Matt, to your point about Fields, I just looked it up back in 2021 when he got an MVP vote. He when he ran got an MVP it. vote, <laughs> he got an he MVP got, vote. He did get an. Yeah. He did no, get an MVP. I do not vote. remember that. Yes, he does. Justin Fields has more MVP votes than Russell Wilson in his career. <laughs> he had 160 rushing yards in 15 games, or 160 rushing attempts in 15 games, which is about on par, I think, to about 11. Yep, pretty similar pace to what he's doing now. Actually, a little bit behind. I think if my math is wrong. Justin long. Fields. That's my question. Who I knows? Know. Sabonis know. got a, a depoy vote. Anything can happen. <laughs> um, that is true. But yeah, I will see how this continues to play out. But as it stands right now, here's here's what my thought was. I guess is a better way to put it. Hmm. I'm glad they're starting Fields. I think if you put Wilson in there, like you you lose this, and I really don't know what you would gain because yeah. I just don't think you're going to be productive through the air if. No offense, Van Jefferson's like your two out there. No offense. I, I saw John Ledyard uh, post a stat that last game was the lowest snap count for George Pickens, like since he was drafted. 
which is a crazy statistic <laughs> because he is the only good receiver that they have. <laughs> That's what is like Arthur Smith's problem, bro? Like, why does he do this? That yeah. one makes no sense. No, taking him off the field entirely to do what? <laughs> I, I mean, don't do know. they not think he's a good blocker or something? That's got to be it. I mean, Van Jefferson that would be isn't crazy. It's. I mean, he's a better blocker than Van Jefferson and and Calvin they, Austin. They've got to be out here to like. He's got to be like. He's just not giving enough effort on the blocks. You know, I, I want to see receivers really <laughs> latch on and, and drive. And I mean, he gives more effort than anybody else. Like. He says, George Pickens playing just 72% of the Steelers' offensive snaps, the lowest mark of his career, while looking completely dominant and playing with the worst wide receiver in the league around him, is easily one of the dumbest personnel decisions of the early NFL season. And he's completely right. Like, George Pickens has been the stand. Like, he looks unbelievably good these first two weeks. And they're like, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know. We'll, we'll just uh, rotate him in and out. It's like, bro, he's your Calvin Johnson. Like, get <laughs> him on there th- at least three-fourths of the time and definitely a lot more than that. Yeah. Jeez, I didn't realize that he's just like not a I don't know what to I tell you about that. Three, no, I don't know either. I don't know either. I think it's insane. just stupid. I, I thought that that was a good stat. It is a good stat. You've had Wendy's Nugs dipped in sauce, but have you had them covered in sauce? Wendy's new saucy Nugs take the crispy and spicy Nugs you love and turn them up to 11. Choose between flavors like buffalo, honey barbecue, garlic parm, or if you're really a heat seeker, try spicy ghost pepper. Only on Wendy's signature spicy Nugs. I dare ya. That's seven delicious ways to try the Nugs you already love. Pick a flavor, grab some extra napkins, and prepare to nug like you've never nugged before for a whole new way to nug it's got to be wendy's at participating u.s wendy's locations what is up hotties how would you like to get an extra five hundred dollars well then head on over to bluewirepods.com slash survey and complete the blue wire audience survey about you and your podcast listening habits for a chance to win a five hundred dollar gift card this survey will help create a better advertising experience for audiences and in turn of course help this show that's bluewirepods.com slash survey where all you have to do is answer some simple questions for a chance to win $500. Make sure to read the full terms and disclaimer plus complete the survey for a chance to win. Again, that's bluewirepods.com slash survey. The link is also, of course, going to be in the description of this episode. Theo, we have to talk about your Green Bay Packers beating the Indianapolis Colts despite having Malik Willis at quarterback. So, of course, we have two questions. The first is... uh, 53 rushing attempts for the Green Bay Packers. Good Hell lord. Fucking yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good I, well, I heard I heard that Willis played kind of a good game. Is that true or I I'm, I'm honestly asking cuz I was I was hating, I won't 14. lie. Uh, I honestly have not watched any of the... I watched Josh Jacobs highlights and then looked at the box score and then I looked at all the Anthony Richardson snaps from this game. Yeah. Here's what I'll tell you about Malik Willis, though he was your week two leader in um, EPA per play. Oh, so, brother! <laughs> so I, I think that that is he did play very well. Clearly, hey, while well, the value is high, maybe you could get a trade off. You know? Oh wait, no, wait a minute. He's third. My bad. My bad. Oh, Kyler man. and so Carr were above him. Bang! But you know. I'm seeing the third highest EPA, but like the 20th highest success rate. So I don't know. It, it was on the ground. It, I'm sure that Malik Willis did fine. The, the, it was just nice for Josh Jacobs and Matt LaFleur to really get to know each other. You know, they were able to do what Matt LaFleur probably would like to do every game, which is run it 50 times. And. He is a demon when it comes to designing those types of things, like the motion to distract the linebackers, and then you send Tucker Craft in first with Jacobs running behind him. It's a good little formula that they've got. Uh, The line played really well. Josh Jacobs is running super hard. It looks really tough to bring him down on first contact. I feel like he's he's looked about as advertised for two weeks now. And, uh, yeah, that's good to see. I mean, 
I'm a bit more concerned about the Colts rushing defense than I am impressed about anything by the Packers yeah. these first two weeks. Um, but it's it's cool that Lafleur can take you know a situation like that and say we're going to be running that that high school that high school offense and and beat an NFL team. So I, I'm, I'm glad that he's on my side. Forty minutes and eleven seconds time of possession for the Green Bay Packers. Is that what it was? That's pretty yes. cool. Yeah, that's pretty absolutely good. disgusting work. But you're right to be concerned about the Colts. They're starting off 0-2. Anthony Richardson had three picks in this game. The run defense has been absolutely atrocious through the first two weeks. And now DeForest Buckner's out for four to six weeks. It's not, not looking good. good. It's not looking good. Um, I'm going to have to give an update on the Colts here in a couple of weeks. For Their FanDuel. top five defensive. And it's going to be. <laughs> and it's going to be. It's going to be a rough update. Um, yeah, I, I I think this year is is just probably going to be about what does Richardson become by the end of it. You got to see growth out of Richardson. If you do, you'll be happy. If you don't, hmm. um, you'll be sappy. <laughs> Good one, man. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You know, we maybe, we maybe overestimated the expectations of the Colts. Yeah, on here a little bit. Yeah, we, it's, it's not. Well, looking I, great I, I thought, I thought they'd be, I thought they'd look. It's kind of looking like too early to say. Richardson's really gonna like, you know, it's gonna be a development process, which is fine. We know, and the defense like kind of looks like it's probably gonna, you know, it's gonna stink maybe, and. Um, I'll say this. I'm a hundred times more concerned about the defense than I am about Richardson, uh, even after this mm. game. I thought the Packers had a good game plan after watching all of his snaps. They just didn't play any man coverage. I know that's kind of who they wanted to be this year uh, against the Colts. They said, I'm not turning my back to Richardson, chasing guys around, letting him, you know, fire in a bullet and, and guys can run after catch. Like, we'll keep eyes on top of everything, force him to layer these throws. And he just wasn't really up to it. Um, then threw some uh, an overthrow on a crosser under pressure. It sailed over Pierce's head. There was one where he tried to get Whiz it right by the Nichols ear hole as the inbreaker just kind of bent around him, and Nixon made a really good play, feeling that route developing behind him and picking it off. Like, yeah, it wasn't a very good day, but it was still like these first two weeks. You would take over anything you saw from like Bryce Young in his 18 games as a starter, you know. So it's like it's yeah. certainly not bad enough to to bench him, like. Or, or I, I saw stuff like that, like, oh, you should bench Richardson. You should bench Richardson. For who? Like, I, Flacco? Flacco? Yeah, Flacco. Everybody loves I like, I like so. we'll see that take, but then Young gets benched, and it's, how could you? How could you what? do it? <laughs> what, what happened? And really, really, that whole thing comes down to, like, was he really that bad? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how bad. This is how bad it is. It's not the coach being like dumb and hitting himself in the head with a hammer. It's that yeah. bad. I saw he had the third lowest win rate of any quarterback ever. Ooh, young. Yeah, behind um, Kaiser and. I was about um, to say. <laughs> <laughs> there was one other guy. I can't remember who it was though. Manziel. He was no. It was another Panthers quarterback. That was like one in sixteen or something as a starter. One in sixteen as a starter. The guy before Delome got there certainly, but I don't know who that would have. I been. thought, but I thought, I thought the guy before Delome. Oh shoot, dude, I don't know. <laughs> this is I don't know. Do I was thinking, episode. I was thinking, two thousand nine Panthers quarterbacks or ten or whatever it would have been. Yeah. Yeah. At any rate, Richardson is twenty fourth in. Do I have my wait? Richardson was 24th in EPA per drop back this week. That's that's not so bad if we're looking The spreadsheet here tells me it's <laughs> The spreadsheet tells me that Anthony Richardson is 14th in EPA per drop back this year. That is nowhere near benching level, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, might as well bench Caleb Williams while you're at it if you're if that's the dialogue we're going to start. You're like, okay. I'm going to tell you right now, dude, with all the like Panthers ruined Bryce shit. All the confidence shit. I promise you, next time that like anything like this happens to another quarterback, I'm pulling that at back out. You better pray Caleb Williams turns it around, or I'm 
the bear's ruined. <laughs> <It's gone. laughs> the, bear, the bears have done more to ruin Caleb Williams almost than the, the Panthers have done to ruin Prince Young. But no, it's not just ruined. He <laughs> he just is. Well, it's, it's some truth to it. The Panthers situation is pretty bad. Let's not absolve David Tepper. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, regardless, regardless, we don't, you know, who I was, cares? Oh, I, I had one more thing to say about Richardson. He should scramble more. All right. Yes. I saw him in this game. Check the front side concept. It was like a high low on the boundary, something like that. And then under pressure, he went all the way to the other high low, which was identical on the other side of the field, and then tried to throw a jump pass. Just run, okay? <laughs> Stop that reading the field shit, okay? <laughs> Get your ass out of the pocket. I don't care that they're in zone. Run by them anyway. Like, I felt lucky as a Packers fan that he seemed to be more looking to throw than looking to run. And with the accuracy concerns, like, that just wasn't a really great play for him. Run, run over. He's somebody. he's too damn. damn. He's too damn big to be. To be I, I, sitting in that I watched him in the Texans day. game. Literally run three people over to score a touchdown. I'm like, yes, slide. this is you, don't run someone over all that. You could slide, but like run. Sometimes like, he, he he should scramble a little bit more. Even he's like he's like Josh Allen. <laughs> mm. Like you've got it, man. Mm. Um, but Theo, you said you're much more concerned about the defense at this point. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, they can't stop the run. Every time Richardson does make a mistake, he's on the sideline for 20 minutes. He doesn't get a like. <laughs> he doesn't he get a to chance to redeem him. He doesn't minutes. get a chance to redeem himself because every mistake that he makes, they, they just get punished for times 10 because they can just keep the ball on the ground and he doesn't get the ball back. So yeah, you think about maybe how that goes into their mentality on every drive. It's like Richard, you don't want Richardson playing scared to make a mistake. Like I don't care that he's throwing picks sometimes. Like if he's going after explosives, but if the run defense is this bad, not only is it you know, limiting your chances, limiting your your defense and, and what they can do. And like, they're, they're all tired because they're on the field every play. Like there's, there's so many implications that, that go to the offensive side of the ball as well in terms of like how you, how aggressively you can play things when your run defense is this bad. So yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible two weeks in a row. It, it, it can't, they have to fix up. They have to do something. I don't, I don't know what. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to, Sit down and look at like <laughs> what what's going on. I'm make some calls. It's like Shane, who's your defensive coordinator, man? Get him Gus, on the phone. Gus Bradley, Mr. Cover Three. <laughs> Mr. Cover Three. You know, I noticed uh, someone posted a chart of like the the best defenses in the NFL by EPA, and uh, the ones at the bottom were running a lot of Cover Three. And almost no one in the league runs cover two man is what I'm also learning. Yeah, that's a pretty rare one. And yeah, cover three isn't exactly the meta right now. It's a lot of quarters and yeah, Tampa two two. high shells and stuff like that. You want to see a good yeah. you want to see a good cover three performance though. Watch the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Detroit Lions Ooh. last Sunday. What a they transition, were Theo. They were playing a lot of cover three and they were cooking, dude. They were they. Their cover three was was masterful. It's probably because they got a good safety. <laughs> Winfield was out. Was Winfield out in that game? Yeah, yeah. How did I not notice that? As Buccaneers safety doesn't really get talked about on that. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I, I noticed you 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 talked about they had a rookie at corner that played very well. McCollum, he's not quite a rookie, but he is the starter this year, and okay. he's a crazy athlete, right? Um, 10 RAS score after the combine, number one corner to ever do it in that regard. And, yeah, just, just everybody, including him, was so good within the zone coverage, like I'm saying. They they would start in the two high shell a lot of the time and rotate down, just step right in front of those, those inbreakers at the – Lions were trying to hit. They had some crucial PBUs in situations like that. There was one play where they were playing uh, with a post safety and then ran this crosser across the field, and he robbed it. And that left Mm -hmm. 
uh, McCollum one on one to defend Jamison Williams on this post, and he was with him stride for stride. It was really beautiful to watch that safety come down and and break that up while still maintaining uh, good coverage on the big post up top. It was like that all day. Like Goff couldn't do anything without Buccaneers just being all over it, reading his eyes, passing off the routes, rerouting people. Jamison Williams got a really hard one on that that pick that got thrown early that maybe could have been a flag but he didn't really get much of a fistful of jersey is he in so yeah it was nice that combined with uh with like Vita Veo was having a pretty good game before he got hurt up front yaya diaby was playing pretty well like it, it was a pretty good defensive performance and that was without winfield and it was without vea for some of it so mm-hmm. i i really liked what i saw from the bucks and then i'm a golf has got to play better like he's Turned it over. They're 25th in passing EPA with a Jamison Williams breakout. Like two games in a row now, he's made a positive impact. You would think, oh, well, if he's playing well, the uh, the Lions offense should be the best in the league. It's not. They, they went to overtime versus a Rams team that just got blown out by the Cardinals. Then they got beat by the Bucks. So I, I'm not pulling any panic button or pressing any panic buttons or anything like that on the lions but they are off to a a slow start this season and Goff has not really done a great job taking care of the football i almost wonder if they're feeling a need to be more aggressive because of jameson yeah i don't know i mean it's hard to say i mean the crossers they are i it was looked a little easy to play that way against them like cover three close the middle of the field there's just got to be a bit of an adjustment to the to how you're playing it and the throws that you're making and i just don't think they really rose to that challenge last sunday yeah yeah i i I didn't catch a lot of this one unfortunately i don't have a ton to add i I, I thought we had talked about it last episode and i didn't catch up on it so no no. that's fine that's fine i I didn't watch the Buccaneers offense. Sorry, guys. Uh, I know Godwin looks good. So shout out to Chris Godwin, defying age, and same with Evans again. So yeah, yeah. And Baker, Baker's looked solid. I saw some Wingo pressures. I, I he, he's not off to a bad start this season. But you're silent on lead, and we all notice. <laughs> <laughs> he had a play. How about this? He had a play. His his yak ability looks pretty special. Um, he had a play where he caught a slant and then like sat down, and I couldn't believe that his butt didn't touch the ground because he got that low. Uh, slipped the tackle, stood back up, kept going, picked up a first down. That plus his his jukes last week to score. Like this guy, this guy's a problem with the ball in his hands. And underneath. Just we'll get lad the ball the and get the hell out of the way. It really is that simple. <laughs> When are we going to have the Xavier Leggett conversation? He needs to get on the field over Mingo, bro. I hate this weak-ass team, dude. I swear (laughs) to God, man. (laughs) He's going to have, like... I see his separation numbers. I'm like, that's not true. That's not... The Panthers just benched... Maybe instead of benching Bryce, they should have benched Mingo. (laughs) They should bench both both of them. (laughs) I was so, I watched some get, throw against the Chargers. It was Mingo as the X, and they ran a, a go, and it, the safety was poaching the trip. So it was a true one-on-one go situation. And it's like, oh, yes, here here is the Leggett throw, and then it's like just Mingo again, and it never <laughs> works. It, not that Leggett has been like very good at separating this season, but still, it's like I'm just sick of Mingo. I want to see number 17 out there. He had a good block. L- Leggett was never great at separating. <laughs> that wasn't his game. His Dude, game have was... they given him an end around or like anything like that? I don't think so. <sighs> Not a ton, I don't think, dude. It's. I think maybe he's seen a screen or two. It's been a lot of honest, Bro, you know, good my, and honest. Let my man just like win at the catch point. This is what, like... Well, he had, he had one opportunity. I mean, it wasn't a great throw, but he had one opportunity then to make a play on it. He needs to get, like, at least five to ten a game of those. Yeah, he needs ten jump balls a game. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying, man. Fuck he's it, like, get down there got, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we're, he's got seven targets we're not seeing that four w. receptions and 35 yards. Um, Got to change. 
we need to we need to double that output week three. All right, let's do it. Anyway, um, do you want to get into else? some of our storylines for next week? Say, was there anything else we wanted to talk about before that? I know Jets Titans maybe a little bit, but we're already at forty five. Jets Titan. The only thing I wanted to say is that Levis's composure is what kills him. But I think everybody knows that. <laughs> it's like he's got. You watch him, and it's like okay, he's got the big arm, and he's aggressive, so he can make big plays in a way that a lot of guys either don't have the NFL arm or just are like too scared to make a mistake. So Levis goes out there, and and you see crazy stuff happen. You know, like the the Calvin um, Ridley catch. Which, like, mm-hmm. I mean, that was nuts, right? Mm-hmm. But the problem is that, like, Levis, Levis's composure betrays him, and there's just too many times where things break down and, and he panics, you know? He makes a you, bad you, problem worse, like, every time. Right, right. I mean, the, the fumble or interception, however you want to put it, that he had, it was like, <laughs> come on, yeah, you can't be doing that ever, man. for the camera, that's all that matters. <laughs> Right, he's he's somebody who I think can can like stick in the league, like for a long time, just based off tools. And maybe if he goes sits somewhere for a long time, I'd love to see him again. And we'll see how he develops over the course of the year. But also, these were problems that like we weren't unaware of at Kentucky. Uh, and I, I'm I'm thinking the Titans honestly, I think look okay in some aspects when they could have been way worse, but. Uh, as it stands right now, it's 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 going to be tough with Levis unless he improves in that category. Yeah, it's it's like the Bo Nix thing, kind of in a different way. But it's like the bad plays are just so bad that they can get you benched. Just even if you're there, they've been in both games. It's not like they're getting blown out like the Panthers or anything like that. Yeah. But it's like you can put you just lose trust in someone when they do things like that. So yeah, he's got a right. Lot and and on top of that, the Jets, they're often still. Like, where is the explosiveness? That's my question. That's what they don't have right now. And there's times where there's been guys, and Rodgers is, like, not pulling the trigger as much as you think he would. And that really sucks because you're not going to be – I mean, you're not going to have a high enough ceiling for me to get hype about this Jets team if he's not. And I'm talking about, like, open guys just oh, yeah. looking at it and not hitting them. I mean, there was there was one on a, on a play action. I remember specifically, you know – corner sort of you know outbreaker and it's it's you know uh, cover one and they've got him and it's just not thrown and rogers takes a check down i think his a dot was among the lowest and and all uh and all of the uh, nfl so I, i'm really worried about that now it's only week two and he's coming back from a big injury and he's working in the offense but it's a concern mm-hmm yeah it is. You know who had two touchdowns in this game, though? Who? Who? Wisconsin. Braylon legend. Allen? Braylon Allen, man. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hey. Stiff arm legend. Stiff arm. Wasn't stiff arm with any. the wrong arm legend. <laughs> they, uh, they have the oldest and youngest player in the NFL, the Jets, in Rodgers and Braylon Allen. Oh, right. That makes sense. That's, That's I crazy. Didn't, I didn't know that Braylon was the youngest player in the NFL. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he started when he was like seventeen. Yeah, he cooked ASU when he like had his just got his driver's license in a bowl game. <laughs> it's like, who is this That's guy? Awesome. He's like seventeen years old. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Rogers hasn't been very accurate, and yeah, he 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 does pass up some reads sometimes i didn't watch this one but i that sounds familiar based on 2022 with the packers he was like he was just like hey man there was something there and you threw it away and looked grumpy you know like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> right that's that's what makes me so mad is like he'll be grumpy i'm like dude that one was like you bro <laughs> it's like playing rocket league you know and your teammate makes a mistake and then mm-hmm. he blames you for it it's like, dude, that was on you. Dog. Is this shaded to us? No, no. <laughs> no, go ahead and say it. But say it with your chest, though. <laughs> say it with your chest. <laughs> uh, no, I, I play Rocket League with people other than, than you guys. Uh, I mostly play twos, and it'll just be like someone will like miss the ball, and I'm trying to rotate, and they'll be like, all of a sudden, the, you know, we're back on defense, and I have to rotate back, and they're like, teammate? question mark and i'm like dude just quit it's not for I, you i feel but, you. 
Yeah, man. But let's get into some of our uh, a little bit of preview for for week three. Some storylines that we're excited for, and then we'll quickly get into the stay hot locks. Theo, what are you most excited for for week three? Oh, I'm excited for Jordan Love to come back, but I'll move that one along. It sounds like they're hoping he's going to play, which is crazy, but that's what I'm most yeah. excited for. I guess I'm excited for just looking at the slate here. Ravens, Cowboys, you've got two teams that are kind of... Right, That's that was mine. Yep. You've got two teams, 0-2, 1-1 and one coming off an embarrassing loss. Uh, you've got some stuff that you need to fix for both of these teams. I think with the Ravens, I'll be interested to see exactly what the run game continues to look like over the course of the year uh if what they have to change to to kind of fit the personnel that they've got up front um you just saw the 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 success that the saints had versus the cowboys on the ground are they able to replicate anything like that can they get henry involved like they want him to be like from the beginning of the game to the end um him making an impact is that is that possible for them i think against the cowboys we can find out a little bit and then for for dallas i i want one of these wide receiver twos to really um make a statement like cooks maybe uh, a guy i'm looking for is maybe tolbert he had a nice catch last week um it's wide open like someone's got to help outside of cd it feels like so Mm -hmm. can can there be a reliable second option there in dallas and and who can kind of get their season back on track here uh that, that that those are that's a game that i'm interested in it yeah i i think i think that's interesting and baltimore plays buffalo uh after this week i mean i still believe in them obviously to to turn things around their defense is great in lamar and all but i mean at a point you know oh and whatever becomes oh and whatever you gotta go and win a big game now like you really do need to right yeah uh so i'm I'm interested to see that that was kind of the big one that i was watching uh i'm still interested in the, in the achilles injury quarterbacks and how they continue to develop i think that decides the season for a couple of teams falcons i have more hope for jets i'm a little more nervous about uh and then also if you want to plug your qb situation i'm plugging mine the dalton performance will be cinema <laughs> Whatever happens with that, <laughs> if he's if he's awful, all right, cool. Let's see let's see what Twitter has to say. And if he's great, same thing, man. Yeah, I'm I'm also excited for uh, Lions Cardinals. If yeah, if, that was one that I was thinking about a lot too. Okay, what were you? What did you have to say about it? Well, I mean, just you looked at how dominant the the Cardinals offense looked last week against the Rams and obviously like I think we all think the Lions defense is better than the Rams at this point but I mean dude they're able to run the ball really well with James Conner and you know Kyler Murray is hitting some of the craziest throws in the NFL Theo I know you did your top three throws from the week and you know you're saying Kyler Murray might have outdid Anthony Richardson already um I mean he's rolling to his left hitting throws and then celebrating before before it's even caught i mean just totally ridiculous and that's not even the one that he hit to marvin harrison so it's like if he's hitting if he's hitting on all cylinders like that and you know you take a look at detroit and the way they played last week the the one thing that you still i think worry about with the cardinals is their defense and their pass rush in particular buda baker's a great player but you know going against a receiving core that was without Puka and without Cup is going to be way different mm-hmm. than going up against, you know, Jameson Williams having his breakout and Amon Ross St. Brown. And then, of course, they've got the great running tandem and Gibbs and Montgomery. So I, I legitimately I legitimately think this could be a great game. Mm-hmm. I know the Lions are favored in it, but I kind of like the Cardinals the way they've been playing. It'll be interesting to, to see what Kyler can do. I, th- I think it will be a good 
QB ranking game, I feel like. Mm. I know quarterbacks don't play against each other, but Goff and Kyler Murray do kind of play in similar systems these days that want to do similar things, getting 12 personnel, force base, run it anyway, you know, run play action off of it, get under center. Like Kyler is in that sort of offense now for the now the second time in his career as he enters uh, year two with Petsang, but he's operating that offense at a really high level while being able to maintain some of the creative stuff. You look at like Bryce Young, right? Getting benched this week. Kyler Murray had all the same concerns coming out of college. Like he's a shorter quarterback that's getting it done in structure, still able to make everybody miss. Like here's your gold standard if you're, you know, one of these right. outer out of structure shorter guys. Caleb Williams, the same thing. Like the Cardinals' offense is proof that it can work. So. I, I'm excited to watch them and, and the kind of season that Kyler has because through two weeks, I, I thought he played a pretty average game week one. And then week two, obviously, he completely lit it up, which kind of puts him in the forefront of like controlling his own destiny in terms of accolades and things like that over the course mm-hmm. of the year. So how 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 good can he be and how many good performances can he string together? I, I'm, I'm very interested to watch Kyler this year. And if he can, I think going into this year, most people would say he's kind of falling off. Goff is playing at his best and like Goff has got to play better because the guy like the Cardinals guy is ready to go. Yeah, that's going to be I that, completely we will agree. be seated. We will be seated for that matchup. Another that one, one that will I was... also be cinema. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Lots going on in the two window. 49ers, Rams, Panthers, Raiders. The two not, window. Not so you much You put there, up the, but... the three the wrong way with that one. The two window. The oh, two o'clock so window. This guy's two o'clock that's window that's games. That's, that's, that's three to three window. But Lions, Cardinals, and Ravens, Cowboys happening at the same time. Uh, Seahawks, Dolphins might. Well, we'll see. That one's gotten worse recently, but. I, I am kind of excited, Matt. I know you said we're worried a little bit more about the Jets. Jets Patriots. That's another game with kind of a lopsided spread. Yeah, I'm, I'm think, pumped for that to be the Thursday night. I think game. that could be an upset watch a little bit, too. Um, Patriots have been running the ball pretty well. Their offense hasn't looked nearly as bad as everyone thought it would, and their defense has been quite all right. Like, I mean, the only yeah. reason the, the Seahawks won was. I mean, Gino was just playing out of his mind football. Like, how many really difficult throws did he end up having to hit? Quite a few. Um, I don't know. If Rodgers can the, the way he's been. Like, Patriots are going Jets, then they're going Niners, Dolphins, Texans. It ain't, they, and they're they beating they all one. of them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm interested in terms of watching Rodgers. The Patriots, yeah. I'm waiting Gonzalez, for them to to put in i'm waiting for may yeah I mean, i'm getting impatient but you know we'll, we'll get we'll get him eventually i'm sure we we will yeah but, uh, he will start a game in his career hot take <laughs> one hey matt corral didn't so yeah well matt corral was a day two pick an ass and ass no disrespect <laughs> Take that back. You don't mean it. But do you want to get into the stay hot locks? Yeah. I do. Yeah. All right. Matt, do you want to give people the rundown of how the stay hot locks work? Uh, Sure. Yeah. We draft games, specifically teams to win. Uh, Every week you can pick as many as you'd like. But if you want to score points in the stay hot locks, you have to get all of your picks correct. So if I picked three teams, but I only get two right and the third one loses, I get zero points. So you definitely want to balance how many teams you're picking versus, you know, how many points you need, so on, so on, so on. Uh, We snake draft it and... The only special rules are if one of the teams you pick ties, it's a wash. So if I pick two teams and one ties and the other wins, I get one point. And if somebody picks, let's say, uh, the Browns to win, I can challenge their pick and pick the Giants with one of my draft selections. And if I'm right, I get two points. However, I will not be doing that, most likely. Spoiler alert. So that's how we play. And I have no points so far because I've been screwed over. That's true. 
Mm -hmm. Theo has no points because he's been screwed over. Because I keep making a third selection is why I... Yeah. Here's the thing. I can't talk because I don't have any points, but... I do believe that your strategy of a third, I think a third selection is like almost always bad. I truly do. I mean, it's not like a parlay where the more you add, like your points kind of exponentially grow. Oh, <laughs> it's right. Just, it's just like, <laughs> I mean, your points time, grow, it's just, just not exponentially. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it probably is silly, but you know, but damn it. It's a silly show. I'm the Anthony Richardson of Stay Hot Locks. I'm taking shots. I'm not taking the play I should. This is what cost you the Stay Hot Locks last year, Theo. That's why you finished with, what, six, seven points? Yeah, I did terrible last year. So, But, but there's a lot last of big, week, big Last week, week. Um, I locked the Ravens and Jaguars. Both of those teams lost. You should get minus two for that. That's true. New rule. <laughs> no. <laughs> Theo locked the Chargers, Texans, and 49ers. The 49ers <sighs> lost. And, and then Matt locked the Eagles and the Chiefs, and then the Eagles lost. Mm-hmm. In embarrassing fashion. Um, they did. I know you were sick after that. So the score is still Bladen 2, Theo 0, Matt 0. I was not. I didn't give a fuck about it, dude. I was like, whatever. <laughs> no, you were Type sick. Type shit. I, I know you were sick. Nah, nah. Um... So how do we want to determine who goes first this time? Because no one's scored. You determine because you win. Okay. Yeah, you pick whatever so, order you'd like. I don't care. I guess I'll I guess I'll keep myself first then, and I will lock. I will lock the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Denver Broncos. Mm-hmm. That'll be my first pick. Yeah, so I think I think that would have been my first pick as well. I think the Broncos have been bad, and I think, uh, yeah. I'm actually going to go with Cincinnati over, if you don't mind me taking the second pick, Theo. Go for it. I'm going to go with Cincinnati over Washington. Biggest spread of the week, Washington's offense makes me raise an eyebrow. I know Cincinnati is 0-2 to start the year, but it's a couple tough ones. A couple mm-hmm. of fumbles. Burrow looked better. I got my questions, but I, I think I think they'll get it done. And I usually trust the spread on these, so Yeah, yeah. I'll go with I'll I'll not trust the spread here, probably why I'm in last, but I'm gonna take the Buffalo Bills over the Jacksonville Jaguars. There are bigger spreads this week, but I just got done watching the Jaguars offense versus yeah. the Browns, and I'm so appalled by what Dude. I've seen, whereas I've been nothing shredded. but impressed by the Bills. Um I just don't think the the Jaguars have much juice right now. Um, I like Lawrence. Everybody knows this. He was pretty inaccurate uh, last last game. And he, guess what his sack rate is right now? It's twelve percent. It is twelve percent right now. Awful through two yeah. weeks. Um, I don't like their routes down the field. I, I don't think they're like fitting the coverage. Like there was a play where he got sacked. The it was. Tampa two from the defense and Gabe Davis ran the route like it was versus man like that really vertical stem and then a break like against zone you want to round that out more so you're kind of always available for the throw instead I I don't think they're adjusting their routes to the coverages that they're seeing Lawrence's pocket like I don't know what he's doing sometimes Um, he's not throwing hot in that Browns game when he should have uh, once I remember against the Dolphins as well there was a curl against off that he should have hit and he stepped up and ran right into somebody so and then they're blowing assignments up front and like letting people through unblocked. So altogether, it just doesn't feel like this offense has much juice. It, it, it is flowing through Gabe Davis right now. I, d- I just don't like it. I just don't like it. Whereas the Bills seem very well coached, very prepared. They're two and zero. They're two and zero. Davis revenge game. I don't know, man. And Davis has been like, I mean. Davis has been better than Christian Kirk, who's been targeted seven times this year and dropped three big plays. Yeah. So, like, it's just a it's just a mess. Um, Ingram was hurt last year. I don't know if he's playing. Maybe that would screw me. But that's a long way to say I'm taking the Bills and giving you a little Jaguars breakdown on the way. All right. You've also got the swing here. Oh, yeah. right. I, I guess then I'll go with spread and take um, – <laughs> Um, the the Forty ers over the Rams, even though they disappointed me last week. Yeah, they did. Booyah, Matt. 
there's two seven point spreads left. I can pick the New York Jets or I can pick the uh, Las Vegas Raiders against my Carolina Panthers. I'm seeing a seven point or a almost seven point spread for Browns over Giants as well, Matt. That is interesting. That is interesting. I think the Giants stink pretty bad. Yeah, I'll I'll go. Here's the thing. I don't want to pick against my boys because in my heart of hearts, I believe I believe Dalton's <laughs> going to go out there and throw it 60 times and, and let what happens happen. That's not true. Like, they'll lose by 40, but you know. Um, I'm not betting on that Jets team. So I guess we're betting on Cleveland. Let's get it. Oh, God. Yeah, and then I'm out. I, I'm done. I... I wouldn't have picked the Browns, but <laughs> you think that you think the Giants could be able to get stuff done on the Browns defense? I don't think I don't think the Giants are going to necessarily be able to get stuff done. I just feel like the Browns aren't a safe team to lock right now. Are the Jets? No, you don't have are to lock Raiders? anybody. I guess you didn't have to lock any of those teams, though. Nah, I I, it's it's good value to lock a second seven point spread. Yeah, but you didn't have to lock that one. <laughs> no, I, I guarantee I, they'll win. Nothing crazy will happen, Bladen. Don't worry. <laughs> look, look, look. I've got one more lock up my sleeve. It's none of the seven-point spreads. I'm locking the Seattle Seahawks to beat the Miami Dolphins. Ooh. I thought about yeah, it. Man. Ooh. Yeah, man. We're going to get Geno cooking. I don't know... Is it still going to be Skylar Thompson at quarterback? Not moved. And even if they were to go out and get Matt Corral, I wouldn't be moved. They're going to get it done. Seahawks. Fair enough. So I've got the Bucks and the Seahawks, and I'll be out. So, Theo, it's on you. If you want to take seven more, that's... Why do I get the feeling that Daniel Jones is about to play the game of his life next Sunday? Dude. Honestly, if that happens to Bladen's team because I jinxed him, I... <laughs> I'm not going to counter lock the Giants, though, although this is a gut feeling bubbling. <laughs> Challenge challenges in play. Look, I, I will say, if one of you had, <laughs> if one of you had the locked Giants. the Jets, I would have challenged. Okay, okay. Uh, but I'm not going to lock the Jets, unfortunately, the way those, <laughs> those mitters are playing right now. So, yeah, I'm going to be a dud. I'm not going to pick my third team this week. And wow, for them. okay. All right, I'm, so I'm wised up. I'm not p- taking the any Packers Titans action for an emotional hedge, or I'm, I'm having a more efficient mindset this week. Wise okay. Theo, start He's biting your nails, blade. This lead is done wise for. Theo. <laughs> <laughs> Analytics Theo is. I mean, this is really Theo about strikes to money again. Ball. I'm about to moneyball these locks. <laughs> this year's for the tiebreaker. Theo won the first year. I won the second year. Matt won the third year. This is big. I got to lock in. You got to lock in, Theo. You have to. So, the week three stay hot locks. I'm taking the Buccaneers and the Seahawks. Theo is taking the Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers. And Matt is taking the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. He's got the Ohio lock. Oh, I do. You do. Ohio lock of the week. Give me the (laughs) Ohio teams. That's true. But. Oh, yeah. That'll wrap it up for another episode of Stay Hot. We'll see who comes out victorious in week three of the Stay Hot Locks. We'll see if your team comes out victorious in week three of the NFL season. And until then, we'll be back to recap with our Monday morning episode. We'll record right after Sunday Night Football. Thank you all for tuning in. Hell yeah. And we will catch you on the flippity flop. Let's go. (laughs) 